Hello and welcome to another weather topic video. This one is a relatively simple question, but actually has to be looked into fairly deeply. This question is, of course, what's on the screen right now. What causes multi-vortex tornadoes? If you have seen any of the outbreak presentations or outbreak videos, you may recognize the term multi-vortex, of course. These are tornadoes that have multiple vortices to them, see vortex. And even EF2s can be described as large, destructive, multi-vortex tornadoes. Multi-vortexes most commonly happen with EF4s and 5s, though, of course, because why else? It's going to be specifically a short and thorough, or hopefully thorough, look at the dynamics of a mesocyclone, mesocyclone translating into supercell. So what does a tornado need specifically inside of a cell? It needs this right here, this big picture right here. It needs rotation, duh, that's what a tornado is, it is rotating. And it needs a protecting yet separate RFD, or rear flank downdraft. That is what this is right here, rear flank downdraft, this blue part. So it needs a shielding and loving, from a distance maybe, rear flank downdraft. Now we'll go into that in just a little bit. So the, those are the two main things for a tornado. So let's talk about that updraft. So a, ro a rotating updraft first starts as just a warm parcel of air or an updraft that doesn't have any rotation to begin with. It manages to encounter a horizontal column or row, I guess, of rotating air for no particular reason. And then boom, this updraft has picked up that rotation and you're going to see a thunderstorm start exploding upwards. If you remove the rotation from this equation, you just have your ordinary, normal, exploding, cumulus thunderstorm. So they both start out relatively the same way, except that a rotating updraft simply encounters horizontal rotation and that picks it up. Biggest part of the updraft is that it is the tornado. The tornado and the updraft are inseparable because they are the same thing. The whole lifespan of, the, of a tornado that is produced by a rotating updraft depends on the updraft's stability. Now, of course, you can have a stable rotating updraft with a protective RFD and still not have a tornado. There are simply way too many caveats to truly be able to predict tornadoes. The updraft is also going to provide some of your most vibrant vertical radar feedback in the form of the whir and not vibrant radar feedback in the form of whir. So whir means weak echo region. This is where the radar is simply not detecting very much. It's because everything is up in here. This is what the updraft is. This is the bounded weak echo region shown here on an actual radar image. As you can see, obviously vertical. This is an updraft after all. And is also tilted in the storm's direction of travel. The, it's called the bounded weak echo region because it's kind of forming a boundary around that weak echo region. Go, go believe that. I certainly don't. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's just a theory. Coming back to that downdraft now. So what comes up must obviously now come back down. This comes the, in the form of two parts, the forward flank and the rear flank downdraft. FFD and RFD. The forward flank downdraft is going to cause a gust front and a shelf cloud. This is going to be essentially, essentially think of a shelf cloud as a very, very long and wide expansive wall cloud, but without the threat of a tornado. 
just some straight line wins. This is also going to be the part that is basically the entire rest of the cell and is going to include most of your rain. All of your heavier rain is going to be closer to the updraft. This is because the updraft is tilted as shown previously with the bounded weak alkyl region. You can see that it's tilted and also in this diagram, you see it's tilted in the storm's travel movement, sorry, movement of travel however you want to phrase it. Movement direction. And all that rain is getting flung up high up in the cloud and is being tossed far away like a wiffle ball. That's your light rain. Now, if you're going to have something like baseball or softball size hail, think of trying to throw a bowling ball. It's not going to go very far because it's really heavy and therefore it's going to remain pretty close to the updraft and you're going to get your heavier rain as you get closer to the updraft. So you cannot throw something that is heavier. Again, just talked about the FFD, your gust front and shelf cloud. The RFD specifically can protect the updraft, be further distanced than what is shown in this third image here, or can engulf choke and therefore kill off the updraft which is actually what's kind of happening here in this fourth image but that is not exactly what's that's not a killing of the storm what's happening what's actually happening here with this fourth image is the recycle process during a recycle process the old updraft will get choked off and die but there is a new updraft already set and forming, unlike where it is a true death where there is no, updraft, no new updraft to replace it. If there is a tornado that is occurring during this recycle process, it will likely wane in strength or will completely dissipate entirely until that updraft is able to start another tornado. So, what does this all have to do with multi-vortex? There are a few theories to this that I personally have, and I'd love for all three of these to be right. First off is multiple updraft offshoots. So think of it kind of as this, as these two bottom images combined, kind of, where you have your cloud base, oh, sorry, you have your updraft, which goes vertical and not horizontal hexagon. And then your cloud base goes here. Then instead of just your one singular inflow jet, perhaps it is getting wisped off into multiple directions, which would possibly also carry rotation along with them and could condense into f and form a funnel. This is possible with, I would say, any tornado, but this does not mean that every single tornado is multi-vortex, of course. The second possibility is that a draft dance could be occurring, a term that I have just invented right here. The updraft, in its full glory here, in the third image, wants to be cuddled and loved and respected, and the downdraft, specifically the rear flank, is a two-year-old that wants to do whatever it likes to. The updraft does not want to be engulfed by the RFD, otherwise then it will choke out and die. Uh, please don't think of that as a two-year-old strangling an adult. That's not how that, n p please don't. That's, that, it's not how that works. This is an analogy, please, no. <laughs> but the downdraft could be attempting to protect the updraft or is simply really struggling in trying to protect the updraft or is possibly trying to surround the updraft as well. There could also be some intense shear tear. This shear tear would occur away from the cell. You're in fact going to go out of the cell and in between the cloud base and the ground for shear tear. Shear tear simply means that 
while the rotation is trying to form its way up to the updraft, it can't because it's getting cut off. That is going to cause tornado genesis failure, even if the RFD is protecting the updraft relatively well. However, at the ground, it could not be, and shear is able to get in the way. So kind of think of it as the second image here as a good example. That would be a key part, again, in tornado genesis failure. So just three theories at the end of this to try and explain multi-vortex. I would love for all three of these to be right, like I said before. I at least know that shear tear is correct because shear tear can actually cause vorticity noodles, which means a quite intense and rapid rotation of, say, an EF3 all the way up to EF5, of course. The draft dance is just purely speculative on my part, and as well as the updraft offshoots. But I hope that y'all take this away and uh, run with it. I certainly am, because again, I really want the updraft offshoots and the draft dance to be correct, because that would be awesome. <laughs>